Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim we begin with Allah's blessed name we praise him and we glorify him as he ought to be praised and glorified and we pray for peace and for blessings on all his noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam as we greet you from the city of Lahore in Pakistan on this the 11th day of the month of Shawwal in the year 1442 with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and uh, we ask you to bear with us today because we want to take up some subjects a little difficult but mashallah i have found uh, in pakistan people who are quick in understanding and uh, not rushing to come and challenge me they take their time to seek to understand because they want to make a fool of themselves <laughs> and i'm happy i'm happy to be here in pakistan after It's about twenty years since last I ever lectured in Pakistan. Twenty years, and during this time I was devoting attention to other parts of the world. And uh, in those other parts of the world, perhaps the Orthodox Christian world was the most important. And in the Orthodox Christian world, Moscow and Be- <coughs> Moscow and Belgrade. for the most important city but now i realize i have to pay attention to athens in greece and to thessaloniki which brings us to constantinople and the need to explain proper methodology because there is a big war coming we all know that that uh, the western world which has a mysterious hatred for the eastern christian world headed by russia for centuries now <laughs> that western world is preparing to attack that orthodox christian world one more time we remember when the crusades took place and they said they're going to jerusalem and they ended up in constantinople <laughs> and they conquered the city and they took hagia sophia and they used it to stable their horses <laughs> so there has been a mysterious hatred of the western christian for the eastern christian hmm. and they both started from constantinople and i wrote a book entitled constantinople in the quran can you get me a copy of this and uh, it may be the first time someone has written on this topic i don't know i've never seen Constantinople in the Quran then we have it in English I don't think we have it in Urdu as yet and what I have extracted from the Quran on Constantinople is causing problems problems for those who have been <laughs> brainwashed for 600 years It's difficult to remove such brainwashing Pakistan is easier to remove brainwashing but that part of the world where Turkey is now located in the Balkans much dif- more difficult I came to Pakistan <laughs> and I, I I before my arrival I knew that everybody in Pakistan had celebrated uh, when Erdogan took Hagia Sophia and converted it to a masjid for the second time and everybody in pakistan celebrated and when i came here i told you you were wrong 
and I directed you to the Quran, then I didn't find a single Pakistani who was standing up to challenge me. Not one. You've accepted. You made a mistake. And you've accepted that this was wrong. In taking the Christian cathedral and converting it into a masjid in violation of Allah's command in the Quran. So today, Waikusan. Today I want to devote some time to methodology because many in Turkey are confused. It's not that their hearts are in the wrong place, it's just that they've been miseducated and it's time for us to teach them. When we teach them the correct way, mm. excuse me, mm. we've done our job. We have no duty to seek to convince them, to argue with them, not at all. We simply present to them the explanation of the, of the subject and that's it. Up to them to do what they want with it. We've done our job. And so correct methodology insofar as Constantinople is concerned, now they call it, what's the new name? Istanbul. Istanbul. But in the time of the Prophet Islam, what name did he use? He said, and we're just reminding the Turkish people, because they seem to be forgetting. He said, who? Prophet Muhammad Islam, he said, and he didn't speak Turkish, he didn't speak Urdu, and he didn't speak English. He spoke Arabic. And he said, "Lataftahanna Constantinia. You will most certainly conquer Constantinople." And then he proceeded to praise the army and the commander. Wala ni'mal amiru amiruha. And so the name of the city that is Sunnah is Constantinople. And it's curious that people should be angry with me <laughs> when I remind them of this and when I tell them that we will bring back that name. I don't know, they get so angry, they can't digest the biryani anymore. <laughs> Gee, then this is the sunnah. He called it by this name. You can't stop us from calling it by that name, okay? Sometimes they get me angry. And when I'm 80 years of age, I have the right to be angry sometimes. So I say, get lost. So it's not, it's not disrespect, it's just I'm getting fed up. <laughs> but when will this conquest of Constantinople take place? Prophesied by Nabi Muhammad Islam. And we quoted from the Hadith of the Sunan of Abi Dawood. And it is a celebrated timeline that he has given. And you all know it because I have quoted it 100,000 times already. You don't want me to quote it one more time today? <laughs> okay. That he gave a timeline of events in which when Jerusalem is center stage in the world and Medina is in forlorn desolation, then look to the next event, which would be the Great War, the Malhama or Armageddon. And then after that, he said, the next event, either seven months or seven years after, would be the conquest of Constantinople. So, every companion of the Prophet Islam, would know that he's talking about a conquest which will take place after the Great War. 
Every companion of the Prophet ﷺ would know that. And uh, we, he also told us about that great war, that 99 out of every 100 who fight would be killed. And therefore, it has to be a war which is fought unconventionally, can't be conventional warfare. So we say today, a war which uses weapons of mass destruction, unknown at that time. No war in history has ever taken the lives of 99% of all combatants. So the companions of the Prophet Islam, would know that this conquest of Constantinople is somewhere in the distant future. And hence it is curious, it is very curious that history now presents us with information of a Khalifa, <laughs> a man named Muawiyah, the son of Abu Sufyan, who launches a jihad to conquer Constantinople. It's curious that this information should reach us because we would expect him to know that the conquest of Constantinople prophesied by the Prophet ﷺ would come only after the great war, the Malchama, the Armageddon. So what do we do with such a historical record? Answer, we put a question mark behind it. You don't absorb it uncritically like sheep and cattle and goats and camels. <laughs> no, Allah gave you a thinking mind. So the historical record seems to be littered with question marks. And the best place, the best place to start to study the subject of Constantinople is not the Hadith. <laughs> the best place to start is not the historical record. And so we begin today in Lahore to teach methodology. Don't make a fool of yourself. <laughs> when Allah has given you the Quran, and he has declared of the Quran that it is al haqqul yaqeen Absolute truth. This is a philosophical term, absolute truth. Iqbal will be comfortable with. al haqqul yaqeen Absolute truth. Truth which cannot be questioned. The human mind must bow before the truth. Once you recognize that this is from the word of Allah, the Quran. Number two, that this Quran is protected by Allah. Nothing else is protected by Allah. So don't begin your studies with the hadith. Don't make a fool of yourself. And then come to me with danda to challenge me. <laughs> Don't make a fool of yourself. Be a good student. Be intelligent. Use your rational faculty and pay respect to the Book of Allah. Pay respect to the Book of Allah. And so you begin with the Quran. And when you have studied the subject from the Quran, only then do you go to the Hadith. And only then do you go to the historical record. And then when you see anything which is in conflict with the Quran, you know, Dal me kuch kalai. And when we go to the Quran, to study the subject of Constantinople, we find that a whole surah of the Quran is devoted 
through this subject. It is called Surah to Room. Surah to Room. I have a little time this morning so I can do a little bit more than I did yesterday. In Surah to Room, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'da'uzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. He says, Rome has been defeated in a land close by, close to Arabia. But after this defeat or following this defeat, Rome will be victorious. And that victory will come in just a few years. And that victory will come both before and after. And it will be in consequence of Allah's help. And Allah helps those whom Allah chooses to help, not who you choose. <laughs> so, room has a positive image in the Quran, not a negative one. That Allah will help them to be victorious after they were defeated. And not once, but twice. But Allah speaks about the two victories in a strange language. He didn't say first and second. He said, Pehle o baad me. Pehle o baad me. Min kabl o min baad. Before and after. And you know that Allah sent down the Quran, the Qawmi at Tafakkarun. There's a big difference from a people who think and the people who eat the biryani and go home and sleep. Both for cat. The people who think Allah gave you a rational faculty. If Allah has blessed me today with some knowledge, it's not because I have someone whispering in my ears and I'm getting secret knowledge. No, because I've done my homework, I've struggled and struggled using my rational faculty for years and years and years and years. I'm a farmer who I planted and planted and planted before I could reap. And that's why I'm here in Pakistan to tell you, you should do the same. So who is room? Couldn't be the United States of America. <laughs> because they didn't exist at that time. <coughs> Couldn't be uh, Britain and France and Germany and so on. It has to be a people who existed at that time. And a big defeat took place at that time. And all of Makkah knew about it. And Makkah was celebrating that victory over Rome. That Rome was defeated. And then it came like a bullet to Makkah. The revelation came down saying, oh no, this is going to be changed soon. And Rome will be victorious. Mokka was laughing at that. What nonsense has come down in the Quran? If you are so sure about you that this is the truth, come, let's take a bet. Guess who took the bet? <coughs> Abu Bakr Siddiq. He said, I'm ready. So he took a bet with them that Rome will be victorious. When the Prophet heard about the bet, he said, Abu Bakr changed the bet. 
Why? Because the Quran says, Fi bid'i sinin. And it meant between three to nine years. So Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala changed the bet. And he won the bet. <laughs> Because exactly as Allah has spoken in the Quran, that is precisely what happened. The room which was a lost cause, nobody could conceive the room could ever rise again. And in such a short space of time, three to nine years, impossible. And yet, exactly as Allah had said in the Quran, it took place. So who was room? Who was defeated? And then miraculously within six, three to nine years, turned the tables and victorious. When will you learn to think and be faithful to the book of Allah? Rather than standing behind 600 years of Ottoman brainwashing. Huh? Thank Allah I'm in Pakistan where people can think. <laughs> Rome <laughs> was constant in over. If you defer with me, wait for judgment day and then present your bogus analysis in Allah's court. Rome was clearly Constantinople. Rome was an Orthodox Christian people. They were also called the Byzantine Empire. Call them whatever name you want. It was Constantinople. And so a Christian people defeated the, well, some people object to my using this term pagan Persia. Pagan Persia, all right. Rome defeated Persia, which was worshipping idols and so on. And that was fulfillment of the prophecy. And Allah went on to say, وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And on that day of victory, when the victorious Christian people defeated the Persian people, you, the believers in this Quran, would celebrate. وَيَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ You would celebrate which included Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. He also celebrated. So who were these Christian people 600 years after Nabi Isa alayhi salam had come and God? I have to translate terms in Arabic to, to English because you have people in Greece who would be listening to this lecture and people in Armenia and Bulgaria and so on. So after Jesus, the son of Mary, alayhi salam, 600 years after, these people are victorious, a Christian people, and our prophet is celebrating, and we are celebrating. Before we turn to that mysterious language, Pehle or Badmi, before and after. Let us identify the profile of these Christian people. The attack had already taken place. The corruption of the faith had already taken place. They had already accepted the Trinity. They were already worshipping Jesus as the Son of God and the third person in the Trinity by the time this is taking place. Does anyone differ with me? You are absolutely correct. In fact, this had already taken place about 300 years ago. 
So our prophet is celebrating the victory of a Christian people over Persia, a Christian people who already have the Trinity and who are already worshipping Jesus as the Son of God. But there are Christian people who believe that God the Father is the only one who knows when the last hour will come. Only the Father, not the Son. <laughs> there are Christian people who believe that although the Holy Ghost is part of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost comes only for the Father, not from the Son. <laughs> this is by the way. And so, a Christian people who despite the fact that they have embraced the Trinity and who worship Jesus as the Son of God are yet a people who are helped by Allah and they are victorious. This is something that is remarkably important. And you do not study any verse of the Quran in isolation because if you do that, you will declare that, G that Iblis was an angel, Haji. Yeah. Huh, you will declare, you will broadcast on CNN, <laughs> Iblis was an angel, right? Because you use the rem methodology of taking one verse in isolation. And then, of course, you made a fool of yourself. So you do not take any one verse of the Quran in isolation. How must you study the Quran? Answer, the way you study the stars. Where does Allah say so? In Surah to Waqiyah. Waqiyah. That the way you study the stars to get direction, you have a ship, you are the pilot, you want to know which direction, you study the stars. In the same way that you study the stars to locate direction, so too must you study the Quran to locate the gui guidance. But the pilot who pilots the ship, he has to spend some time. He can't do it overnight to study all the stars. It's called astronomy. And he has to locate the patterns among the stars a skilled branch of knowledge. So to, you can't be a schoolboy and study the Quran, no, you got to grow up. Because you have to study how the verses of the Quran are interconnected with each other. You have to locate what my teacher, a blessed memory, Maulana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari, in his book, The Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society. You know, Iqbal called for the reconstruction of religious thought. My, an, my teacher answered him and gave it to him. Reconstruction is there in two volumes. The Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society. And we have it in the next room for you, published in Pakistan. So, you have to locate what my teacher described as the system of meaning, which bring all the verses of the Quran on a subject together as a harmonious whole. If you do that, nobody would ever believe this rubbish. But our Prophet married a child. The only way you could accept that is if you take leave of absence from your common sense. I am applying for six years of leave of absence from my common sense. <laughs> then you can accept that. Hmm? That our Prophet married a child. Chesal uh, Kibachi. Did Allah ever come declare that I am giving this permission to you and only you and no one else but you? Is there any evidence of that? 
Huh? You quiet this morning. There is no evidence of that. You cannot manufacture evidence today. Well then, prepare yourself. If you accept this hadith, prepare. Marrying a six-year-old child according to you, not to me, is now sunnah. You see where you end up? In which garbage bin you are now located? Would you marry a six-year-old child? No, 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 no. But I accept the hadith. Would you give your daughter at six to be married? No, 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 but I accept the hadith. <laughs> when people stop thinking, sometimes they end up in the garbage bin of knowledge. <laughs> you have to get the system of meaning of the subject. And when you do, when you have located that system of meaning pertaining to Constantinople, for example, you then turn to the Hadith to examine the Hadith that the Quran must sit in judgment over the Hadith. This statement of mine, the Darul is not prepared to accept. No. That the Quran must sit in judgment over the Hadith. Beautiful words, not from me, from my teacher. From my teacher, may Allah bless him. They didn't like him, you know, because he said, I'm not brave. So the brave threw him out of the window. <laughs> he said, I am not the Obandi. So the Obandi threw him out of the window. He says, I am not Ahli Hadith. So the Ahli Hadith threw him in the sea. <laughs> he says, I am not Wahhabi. I am Muslim. So he was left all alone. Today, his profile is higher than all of them. Tell that to the Brailvi world. Tell that to the Deobandi world. The profile of my teacher is rising higher and higher. Because Allah says, sorry, Allah's messenger said, Sallallahu Ta'ala, he says, with this book, Allah will raise some. And with this book, Allah will lower others. So with this book, Allah is raising raising the profile of my teacher. They rejected him. Today, his profile is higher than theirs. Hmm? When you do that, you'll find, this is what I've done in Constantinople in the Quran. It is how many pages? A little bit more than a hundred pages, that's all. And in the cover, I put Hagia Sophia. Hmm? It's only a hundred pages. Maybe one day somebody will translate it to Urdu for me. When you've located the subject in the Quran and you found that Allah speaks positively about Constantinople, then you look to the Hadith to see whether something in the Hadith is now meant to sabotage the Qur'an. Mm. And you won't allow it to happen. Mm. <laughs> Not only does Allah speak about he hel His help, that He gave help to Constantinople, and they were victorious. And we who follow the Qur'an, we were celebrating. But he also spoke of two victories. The context here is two victories for Rome. So don't come to me and tell me, no, 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 the first victory is Rome and the second victory is this Ummah. You're out of context. The first victory is Pehelese, Minkabal. And the second victory is Iskibad, 
bermimbat bin Qabil bermimbat and we are now invited to think invited to think hmm? I praise and I thank Allah who gave me a teacher who <laughs> encouraged me to think yes the Darul Loom prohibits you from thinking so you <laughs> you can never produce an Iqbal in a Darul Loom education never but my teacher encouraged me to be an independent thinker. I'll go up to him and say, Maulana, I don't agree with you. No Darul Loom student could do that. And instead of <laughs> replying to me and trying to explain to me, he just smiled. That's a great teacher. He just smiled. He says nothing. And three months later, I come to him. So Maulana, no, I agree with you. <laughs> because he knew he has to give him a chance to think. He used to say, I'm not going to put you on my back and climb the mountain. I'll teach you how to climb the mountain. You climb it yourself. That was the teacher I had. So, what does it mean? Min Kabul? You got to think. And that's what they don't want us to do. They say, no, all thinking is now stopped. This is Salafi methodology. I don't have boxing gloves against the Salafi. This is an intellectual exercise. I don't have any prejudice in my heart against you. But this is an intellectual exercise. You know, favoritism in knowledge. No thinking has not stopped. Allah sent the Quran to people who think. And the Quran is inexhaustible in its knowledge. It can never end. So what does it mean? It means that there is something located in between two victories of room, which is pivotally important. They, they use a term, the young people now, the, the young people are teaching me new terminology. They call it game changer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I have to learn the new terminology of the young people, the game changer. Why is it in between? Well, if you do your homework and you're not afraid, you're not afraid. Don't worry about them. You're not afraid to express yourself. But when you express yourself, be careful. Say, I'm only expressing my view. Allah knows best. I can be right, I can be wrong. Make sure you do it, because if you are wrong, you don't want to be embarrassed. <laughs> and I am also wrong sometimes. And thank Allah for that, that I sometimes make mistakes. So you know I'm just an ordinary scholar like all others, we make mistakes. But that does not mean you should not think. Yes, if I didn't make mistakes along the way, I wouldn't reach where Allah has brought me today. So what is it? What is that game changer in between the two victories? We have to now start with Constantinople at the time of the Prophet and look forward to see what is going to happen that will be the game changer. And that's what I did in this book. And guess what I found? I found the game changer. It occurred in 1054. Some 400 years after the first victory. When Constantinople broke into two. Rome breaks into two. 
and one part of Rome remains in Constantinople and the other part of Rome goes back to Rome in Italy. Rome has come from the original term Roman because the pagan Roman Empire was collapsing and they took a new capital in Constantinople and they carried the name to Constantinople. But then it became a Christian empire. And after it became a Christian empire, then Allah described it in the Quran as Rome. So when we use the word Rome, we use it from the Quran. <laughs> and so we do not say Rome is that pagan one. We say Rome is this Christian one that Allah has helped to become victorious. This was 1054. And one part of Rome became Western Christianity with the Vatican, the, Ro the Pope in Rome. And the other part remained as Eastern or Orthodox Christianity. And uh, it is such a game changer, this min kabul wa min bad, that the Quran has to tell us something about this game changer. Oh. This division of room into two. And it does. It does. And after we study this in the Quran, then we can go to the Hadith. It is in Surah Al-Araf. Was'alhum ba'da'uzu billahi min ash-shaytanu wajib. Was'alhum and question them. Question them, ask them. عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَادِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ And ask them, question them about the city by the sea. The city by the sea. وَاسْأَلْهُمْ عَنِ الْقَرْيَةِ الَّتِي كَانَتْ حَادِرَةَ الْبَحْرِ It is a city where a people reside who are obliged to obey the law of the Sabbath. But only one people, only one people are obliged to obey the law of the Sabbath, and that's the Banu Israel. No other people, only Banu Israel. So Banu Israel have to be here in the city because they are obliged to obey the law of the Sabbath. What is the law of the Sabbath? You know, I'm jealous of them that they have this law and I don't have it. The law, Allah created what is uh, sometimes carelessly called the heavens and the earth. The creation in six days. And in consequence of having created all creation in six days, he marked that event on the seventh day. To commemorate that event on the seventh day. The seventh day, therefore, is a day of profound, profound, divinely ordained significance. One day I'll be able to explain this to you in Urdu. Never mind. One day I'll do it. <laughs> English is not the best language to convey this. No, it's English. English is not. Urdu is a better language. The seventh day was ordained, divinely ordained, to commemorate the six days of creation. So on the seventh day, you're not allowed to work. You have to pray and rest. And I am jealous that they have the law and I don't have it. 
Juma is not for me that day because Allah says that when you finish with the Salat Fantashiru Fil Al Babtagu bin Fatlidlahi. Don't go home and sleep and rest and pray. Go out into the earth and earn your livelihood. Specific language in the Quran. So it's not a Sabbath day for us. That's not our Sabbath day. It's theirs. And this is their Sharia, not ours. Their Sharia, not ours. And when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, Jesus, the son of Mary, tell them for me, my critics, who are school boys, that he will observe the Sabbath. Because that is the Sharia that has come down with him and with Nabi Musa alayhi salam. When he is with us, he'll perform Salatul Jum'ah with us. I have a secret for you. He's not going to put on a face mask. <laughs> I have another secret for you. He's not going to stand up bandar jaise, three feet apart. Whoever doesn't like those statements of mine, you can do what you want. It's me talking now. So when Nabi Isa alayhi salam comes and he is with his people, he will observe the Sabbath. And so these people in Constantinople, that is the town by the sea, are obliged to obey the Sabbath. So, this has to be after the holy state of Israel had collapsed. This has to be after Nabi Isa Islam they crucified him before their eyes. Huh? Sorry. He was crucified. <laughs> and some were celebrating and others were crying. Crying. Those who were celebrating, Allah expelled them. Broke them up into bits and pieces. Scattered them all over the world. And they could never return. They could never establish a holy state. But these who were crying, they are here. It's not the Jews, it's the Christians in Constantinople. If I'm wrong, correct me. Tell me if it's Brooklyn. <laughs> but something happens here in Constantinople that only the Hadith will explain to us. So we pause to go to the Hadith now for help. Because Nabi Muhammad was sent to teach the Quran. You can't study the Quran without him. And he now explains how these people came to con conquer Constantinople. After they boasted of how they crucified him, Allah separated them, the ones who were celebrating from the ones who were crying. He no longer uses the term Banu Israel. No. He introduces a new term. He calls them Ahlul Kitab. And these are called Al Yahud, the Jews. But these are not only called Al Nasara in the, in the, in the Quran. In the Quran. But in the Hadith also, Allah refuses to use Banu Israel. So he uses another term, Banu Ishaq. Because Banu Israel no longer. And Banu Ishaq arrive in this city. Janibun minha fil bar wa janibun minha fil bar. 
One part of the city adjoins the land and another part of the city is surrounded by the sea. Constantinople. And it is it's a city with three walls, meaning three sides. That's Constantinople. It has the shape of a triangle. And they say, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, and one side collapses. This is symbolic language. And they repeat it the second time and the third time when the city falls to them without a fight. Indicating it's a city that converts to Christianity. They don't have to fight to create. And this is precisely what happened when Constantine became a Christian. After they had conquered the city, then the cry was called out, Dajjal is released amongst you. Dajjal is released amongst you. Now we come to Dal Mekuchkala hai. That something goes wrong in Constantinople. They're not supposed to fish on the day of the Sabbath. But the Jal has brainwashed them and corrupted them. And there's some of them now who care. I don't care two peanuts for the law. Jesus is the truth. If I have the truth, what's the importance of the law? I have the truth. If I have the truth, what's the importance of the law? This is more important. See? The Jal has taken them for a ride. So Allah sends the fish on the day of the Sabbath. And every other day of the week, no fish. So they went fishing. <laughs> they went fishing. And those who were faithful to the law, they warned them, Allah will punish you. And others were saying, others were saying, you're wasting your time. Go read Surah Al-Araf. You're wasting your time with these people. They've gone down the river of no return. <laughs> Imagine that, eh? The third group, the, the, the insight that they had. You're wasting your time with these people. They've gone down the river of no return. And then Allah acted and He punished them. And that part of Rome, which now breaks away to go to the West, is cursed by Allah. Kunu kiradatan khasein. Be apes despise. I don't have the time. I don't know why they told me time is up, but what can I do? I wanted some more time with you. The, yeah. the punishment given to them is unprecedented in the Quran. Do your homework. Sometimes Allah will say, you're just like cattle. Sometimes you say, you're just like a donkey. Sometimes you say, you're just like a dog, but he never says you're a dog. No, he never says you're a donkey. He never says you are um, cattle. But here he says, be apes, despise, but a human being would not be transformed into an ape. No. Just pantrupia akal. <laughs> but pantrupia. I say pantrupia because in my time when I was a student, if you had pantrupia in your pocket, you're okay. <laughs> oh, yes, you're okay. <laughs> because the bus was only charging chawani. Chawani. <laughs> so, the Monkey is naked. He doesn't put on clothes, but that's not shameful. Be apes despise. Kunu kiradatan khasi'in. Be apes despised. But nothing despicable of a, hu of an, of a monkey being naked. But when human beings show a preference, 
for public nakedness. Ah, yes. That is despicable. It hasn't reached the horrors yet. As yet. But it's coming from there. Where is it coming from? I used to call it Monkey Town before I came to Pakistan. Now I call it Bandarabad. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> monkeys, monkeys do their bedroom life in public. Nothing despicable about that. That's their way of life. But when human beings now show a preference for sexual relations in public, now that's despicable. They're cursed. So one part of room still signs favor with Allah. And the other part of room is cursed by Allah. That is the Quran. But they wouldn't accept that. These schoolboys with 600 years of Ottoman brainwashing and they would not go to the Quran for guidance. That's why I'm so happy I'm with you in Pakistan. Because you show more respect for the book of Allah. Yes. So when will the next victory come? And who will be victorious? The schoolboy is talking about that room which is cursed by Allah. Which is not even referred to in the Quran as room. They will be victorious. And the schoolboy goes and he joins NATO. And he's comfortable as a member state of NATO. And he wants to come and tell me he's the Sultan of the Muslims today. Huh? <laughs> you are comfortable in an alliance that comes from Bandarabad. And you want me to accept you as the leader of the Muslims? Huh? <laughs> No, 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 no. We are not the people who eat biryani and go home and sleep. No, Allah gave us a capacity to think. Although, you know, Iqbal said, I used to say, Iqbal said, this Ummah stopped thinking 500 years ago until Colonel uh, Ashfaq corrected me. No, no, he said 300 years. <laughs> Iqbal said, this Ummah stopped thinking. We are people today, alhamdulillah, the young ones. You're not going to take us for a ride with your Ottoman brainwashing. The second victory is about to come. This is my opinion. And whenever I give my opinion, I carefully declare, do not accept my opinion unless you are convinced that I am correct. Because I can make a mistake. My opinion is that a great war is coming. And Rome is at the center of that great war that is coming. And Rome today is the orthodox Christian world that was left in Constantinople. And now is led by Russia. Not Russia of the Soviet Union. Not communist Russia. Not atheist Russia. Huh? Wake up. Wake up. If you've been sleeping, wake up. The Soviet Union folded its tent and disappeared. <laughs> Communism has disappeared. The atheist state is gone. But there are schoolboys who still say, you know, Russia is communist. What can I do? This Russia is returning to its orthodox Christian heart. Bandarabad says a man can marry another man and get a marriage certificate. See? You know how many people in Pakistan are hurry wanting to go and live in Bandarabad? Raskibad. Everyone, almost everyone. <laughs> you know how many? They want passport, they want visa. I long. This is Jannah. <laughs> yeah, Pakistan. It is Jannah, man. 
Thank Allah that you are not in that category. The victory which is coming is coming to Rome. This is the second victory. Min Kabul, wa min Ba'd. And if you go not to this book, give me uh, the Jasad. Not to this book, Constantinople in the Quran. You go to this one. Uh, yeah, did you just said? Dajjal, the Quran, Dajjal, and the Jasad. The Quran, Dajjal, and the Jasad. I think it is in this book. You will find the explanation why has Russia so quickly become the dominant military power in the world? What is the explanation? And therefore, what is it that explains? <coughs> My view that Russia will defeat NATO in the Great War which is coming. Okay? Russia will be victorious. Yes, Russia will be damaged. But Russia will be victorious. And if the schoolboy remains as a member of NATO and joins in the war against Russia, he got a surprise coming up for him. For having neglected the book of Allah. Mm. Yes, Turkey, if Turkey fights with NATO against Russia in the war which is coming, then Turkey will be destroyed, defeated and destroyed. And then came the conquest of Constantinople, which takes place after the Great War. After the Great War. The conquest of Constantinople without a fight, La ilaha illallahu Allahu Akbar, on one fall, and then the second one, and the third, that took place when Constantinople became a Christian city. And now this is after the Great War. I try my best to teach the school boys, but what can I do if they would not listen? But you in Pakistan, you will move rapidly ahead, inshallah. inshallah. Rapidly ahead, inshallah. inshallah. The young ones, I don't know about the old ones like myself, <laughs> but the young ones, you will move rapidly ahead if you continue to think and if you continue to recite the Quran as Allah recited it. And if you continue to study the Quran and do not make the mistake of losing the nur. You know what happens when you commit zina? All the nur is gone. And inside is only andhera darkness. You're left with only andhera or darkness. You know what happens when you take money and borrow on interest and you lend on interest? Aji? <laughs> Whether it be from the front door, the commercial bank, or through the back door, the Islamic bank. <laughs> <laughs> huh? All the noor is gone and the curse of Allah's messenger is on you. Hmm? So you will advance, inshallah, when you think. So do not accept my view uncritically. Russia will be victorious in this war. Modern Western civilization will be defeated in this war. The curtain will come down after 300 years. And the reason why the Western world, the Zionist world is lusting for the war, lusting for the war, is because they want Pax Americana to make way for Pax Judaica. I explained this 20 years ago in Jerusalem in the Quran. Go check it out. The book is there. That's the first book you should read. You want to embark on Islamic eschatology, read that book first. After the Great War, then 
This is their plan. This is their thinking. Both the superpowers would mutually destroy each other. And the world after the nuclear war is an open road for Israel, Assan. Easy. That's why they want the Great War. <laughs> But they plan their plans, and Allah plans his plans. And guess what happens after the Great War, but Turkey doesn't know it? Answer, the conquest of Constantinople. Not that one in 1443. That one in 1443 of the Ottoman Sultan Muhammad Fatih took place in violation of Allah's command in the Qur'an. But when I try to teach the Qur'an to them, they don't want to listen to me. So wait, and time will tell you whose scholarship is valid, mine's or yours. Allah says, if your people want peace, you can't wage war with them. If they incline to peace, you must reciprocate. Constantinople did not want war. It was a hopeless situation for Constantinople. Constantinople was prepared to pay for peace. The Ottoman Sultan took the Quran and put it away to wage war on Constantinople. But the schoolboy will never understand that because he has 600 years of brainwashing upon him. You have to send him to the best dry clean laundry in the world. <laughs> yes. Hopeless people. I am so surprised to find that people who have stopped thinking and all they can do now is insult you and disgrace, use disgraceful language for you. Incapable of a civilized con this conversation. As though they've been driven to madness by the touch of shaitan. No other people in the world of Islam are like this. None. The rest of the world of Islam can think. And when he conquered Constantinople, Allah says, This Ummah has a job, a duty, to protect the Christian church the Christian cathedral, the Jewish synagogue, the masjid, even if you have to fight to do it. And guess what he did? He took the biggest cathedral of all and converted it into a masjid. <laughs> uh, that's not the conquest of Constantinople. That was bogus. 600 years later, we can declare it's bogus and everybody will agree with us, it's bogus. So get lost. We're saying to you from Lahore, get lost. We're taking 600 years of your brainwashing and we're throwing it into the garbage bin. Because truth has come and truth will destroy your falsehood and your oppression and your brainwashing and your eternal hatred for room. Well, Allah speaks well about room. My time is up. But the conquest of Constantinople has to be studied first from the Quran and then from the Hadith. And only then you will, you will avoid making mistakes. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> We'll go to the first question that came in and it was very relevant for us, Sheikh. Uh, the question is, uh, the social distancing in the masjid, how can we put a stop to it or are we wasting our time? Do not enter a masjid. Kadamni Ratna. Where the law requires you to wear a face mask or the law requires you to pray with three feet separate from each other, because this is bid'ah. This has not come from Nabi Muhammad 
the World Health Organization cannot tell me how to pray. Nabi Muhammad tells me how to pray. If you cannot find a masjid, stay home and perform your Salatul Zuhr at home and do not perform Salatul Jummah. If you join them in the masjid, you just like them. Next. Um. Uh, Muslim scholarship in Pakistan seems to be negatively affected by the um, the alleged purchase of the cathedral. How can we respond in a scholarly way to that? On Judgment Day, warn them that on Judgment Day they will have to answer. Provide the proof that the Christians sold Hagia Sophia to you. And when they provide the proof and Allah says, this is bogus. What a sorry state they will be in that, that day. Yes. Again, Panch Rupiah Ka Akal. Panch Rupiah. If the Christians sold the cathedral, Surely there'll be some proof on the Christian side. How come there's nothing on the Christian side? They reject it. And all the proof is coming from this one side. Eh? That doesn't seem, seem to be a, 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 a legitimate, legitimate tra business transaction. That seems to be a business transaction that came with a fellow named Santa Claus. Next question. So there's a there's a question regarding Nabi Isa, which I believe you already answered. Uh, so I'll not ask that question. Uh, uh, there's a relevant question: What is Russia up to? As Putin has warned Israel of the war current of the of the war in current Israel and the Hamas con conflict. The Quran says, and now of course you do your homework. Here in Pakistan. So I don't have to remind you. You do your homework. And you go and find in the Quran what Allah says in the Quran. So I don't have to ask you, why didn't you do your homework? That mm -hmm. Allah says in the Quran. And He's speaking to Jesus, the son of Mary. Nabi Sallallahu At that time when the, the Roman government had required by the Jews were preparing to crucify him. And Allah says to him in Surah to Ali Imran, I'm going to do a number of things. One of which is I'm going to raise those who follow you above and dominant over those who have rejected you and committed kufr against you and your mother, which is the Jews, and today the Jewish Christian Alliance, which is NATO. I'm going to raise you above and dominant over them. And when I do that, you remain in that position of dominance until the end of the world. We are living, we are today living at a time when this is now fulfilled. <laughs> Before our eyes. Twenty years ago, we couldn't say so. When the Soviet Union had collapsed, and the Russian economy was collapsing and uh, it was like a fire sale <laughs> and the Zionists were there grabbing up properties and co companies and so on under Yeltsin and overnight, overnight Russia had become so powerful a state that the Russian foreign minister spoke to the U.S. Foreign Secretary a few days ago 
and delivered a message and you can imagine what that message was. And after he delivered that message, the US Foreign Secretary then contacted, the American President then contacted Netanyahu. And Israel, which was boasting, we're not going to stop, we're not going to stop, we're going to finish them. Israel had to take a ceasefire. Yes. For those who can think, we've just had a dramatic demonstration of the military superiority of, of Russia today. That not only the United States had to listen, but Israel had to listen. I'm not going to say anything more. Go ahead. Uh, Sheikh, the ro uh, a few questions regarding the role of Pakistan, where we're being told of the Ghazwat al-Hind, and we have, uh, you know, different uh, aspects in that. What is the role of, of Pakistan, or us Pakistanis that are here listening to you, how should we react? You do not take a hadith by itself, uncritically. Otherwise, you can be taken for a ride, and you deserve your fate. <laughs> You deserve your fate. Yeah? On this subject of Ghazwat al Hind, unfortunately, unfortunately, we cannot find people who use proper methodology. No. Everybody accept uncritically. And in the process, you disrespect the Quran. What a pity. When will you learn? <laughs> Something that is such critical importance. A jihad against India. Although the hadith says Hind. But you say India. <laughs> Hind includes Pakistan, Baba. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're preparing now to conquer Hindu India one more time. The Mughal rule over India was the first time we could do it a second time. Okay? That's a schoolboy. Tell him for me. I don't care whose name he is. What is his name? You're schoolboys. <laughs> That's not the way. You have to give respect to the Book of Allah. And when you study this subject from the Book of Allah, you will put a big question mark behind that hadith, but we don't have the time to do that today. Next question. Uh, Sheikh, uh, there's a 15-year-old, a and I'm compelled to ask his question. Uh, he's sitting, that's you, is this your question? Could you ask your question yourself? What did he, he say? He says, can I be your student? I'm 15 years old. Can I be your student? I'm 13 years old. He's 13, 13 years old, years old. <laughs> mashallah. He's 13 years old, and he wants to be your student. He wants to be my student. Fine, okay. Do you recite the Quran every day? No? Okay. When you are seven years of age, you should be able to recite anywhere in the Quran. By the time you're ten years of age, you should be reciting the whole Quran to khatam the Quran every month. Once a month. So in the morning before you go to school, because you are young, your brain, your mind, your memory is much better than mine's. So you finish your juice quick, quick, quick. Burhape me kuch baat ban parti nahi. Old man. <laughs> so you, you finish your juice in the morning before you go to school. Don't wait until you come back home, you have to do your homework. <laughs> At this age, you can memorize the Quran very easily. But I'm not asking you to do that. I'm only asking you to recite your juz of the Quran every day. But you must recite it the way Allah recited it. And for that, you must go to the book, Quran or Chan, it's back there, okay? When you do that, you're my student. Next. Sheikh uh, uh, Imran Wajid? Imran Ji. Wajid? Kone. Okay. Uh, regarding the uh, modern Western civilization, um, there's there we believe that there are two parts of that. There's one that's the the, the people with the faith, and one that's not, and it's with the Dajjal. 
So the 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 jail is giving us uh, uh, media is, is is attacking us through different ways of deceit. How do we counter that? I have not understood the question. Okay. Next question. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Allah has guaranteed the protection of the Quran. Uh, how do we then proceed with the Hadith? As okay, yeah. I explained it a hundred million times already. I did it one more time. <laughs> Answer: First, study the Quran as it ought to be studied. For that, study my book methodology for study of the Quran. I'm going to change the title the next time we print. I'm going to put a new title, The Quran and the Stars, Methodology for Study of the Quran. And this will be the companion of The Quran and the Moon, Methodology for Recitation of the Quran. When you study the Quran using that methodology, then you go to the Hadith. When a hadith is in harmony with the Quran, you accept it. When a hadith tells you that our Nabi married a child, and you say this is in conflict with the Quran, you reject it. When a hadith is neither in conflict nor in harmony, you accept it. But do not pick up any boxing gloves over this hadith. Do not create any sect, do not divide the people. Do not still build a legal system towards such a hadith. Next. Uh, Sheikh, that's all time we have. That's all, okay. Um, and uh, now if you can proceed to need Sister to Nabila, uh, take the books and uh, have the signature autograph from Sheikh. Uh, there's one question that you asked, we can ask that later to him directly. 